Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's a brand new year. We'll call this season two. Why not? We've redone everything here for you to enjoy some little eye candy, if you will. <laughs> but today we're going to start off 2023 with an oldie. It says 2021 on the bottom of the box. Whatever. It's new to me. So let's get into the review. With reviews on this channel, we always start with an overview. Then we look at details, articulation, and posing. And then we wrap things up with a nice overall rating. NECA, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Disguise, the four pack. And I specifically got this because I wanted the dark green turtles, which we will look at. But if you're looking at the marketing here, Donnie's a little darker, but this is the lighter color scheme, which is pretty much always the case. Even back in the 90s, the turtles always got the bright green in marketing and print stuff and uh, ornaments as well, apparently. But then the animated series was always a little bit darker, which is really interesting. And when there's four figures like this, it's a lot. Let's just get into it. So in front of the box, we got this awesome artwork that is just pulled right out of the cartoon, essentially. But they're at Vinny's Pizza Place in their disguise, right? This is like episode two or something of the original animated series. But let's look at this packaging. So when we look at the top of the box, it's essentially like the top of a building, but there's like garbage on it, which is interesting. We got this wanted ad for Shrika, which I don't remember anything about. We've got special introductory offer. Um, and then whatever this is, it's a box of something that is probably from an episode that I'm sure somebody could uh, let me know in the comments what that's supposed to be from. We've got the bottom of the box, which is pretty plain, but the important stuff, right? We've got everybody involved in packaging and figures, sculpting, paint work, all that stuff. The side of the box, which I can't really get under this camera. So side of the box, we've got uh, the, what's his face from the Muckman set. And we've got a wanted poster and whatever that is. So on the back of the box, you get the figures actually in the photos here with their disguises on, which is pretty cool. Uh, the biggest reason why I don't, didn't really want this pack is because <laughs> these faces are just kind of creepy, if anything. They kind of look like those baby masks that you can get for Halloween or whatever. But the dark green set versus the bright green figures, which again, look more like the marketing. I think the dark green looks nicer. Obviously some of the accessories that you're gonna get in the box. So this is retail value, I think was $150 or it was this price. So what you get in this pack is actually, this is a great value, you get a ton of stuff. And when you open the front of the box, it's actually a downward flap, which they've done a couple different times, but you get this nice street scene. You got some comic books and stuff. You got the manhole cover. So pretty detailed, nice cool artwork on the flap here. Pretty neat. Is this just making a really nice packaging or is there a way to utilize this thing? Do, should you just cut it off and use it as a, you know, like a, not really a, back, a backdrop. So inside the box, obviously we've got the figures themselves and then we've got all these different pizzas and all kinds of cool stuff. So because of all the glare and everything and looking at them in the pot, I can't speak. Of course, with all the glare that we get on the plastic here, plus, you know, looking at them through plastic is not nearly as fun as look at at them outside of it. So let's take them out of the box. And inside the box, you get kind of an extension of this street scene. So you could use that as a backdrop on your shelf or something. Although this is some really low windows. <laughs> so in this set, we actually have like a two tier of plastic of all the accessories. So there's a lot to look at. So we're gonna try to just speed through this. Plus this is an older thing. So let's get everything out of the plastic and take a look. All right, so there you go. As you can see, it's a bit overwhelming of how much stuff you get in here. So value wise, this is insane. Now, this is an older item. So can you still find it at retail price? I mean, probably just have to kind of keep an eye out, be patient, but I, I feel like you'll probably commonly see them for 200 bucks because you know, scalpers. <laughs> but when you compare NECA for the pricing to other brands, I mean, this is insane. You get four figures, you get tons of hands, which, you know, makes sense per figure. You get extra heads, which can all be popped apart and 
altered with the mouths and stuff. So you have kind of endless combinations. You get a skateboard, four hats, four terrifying looking faces, a bird, book, two pizzas, a hat, a slice, a boom box, their weapons. I mean, this is insane. Definitely a good bang for the buck. A buck, the buck, it's buck, I bang for bucks. No, that's not right. Um, all right, so let's just jump right into details. Really nice, you know, sculpt work as always. No doubt about that. It's actually on the pan, which is cool. So it's good for, you know, extra props or if you do toy photography, then you're gonna love this stuff. Look at this one with all the extra pieces of food. You got the ice cream and stuff and whatever kind of fish it is, but this, is generally kind of a call to some of the things, the weird things that they order in the cartoon. Then you get this hat, which is indeed weird. I'm hoping that goes on a normal head, not just these ugly, terrifying heads. We got this really detailed slice of pizza. Look at that, it's actually great. I mean, this is all coming from an 80s cartoon, which, you know, isn't gonna be the best for details and stuff, but when it comes to the sculpt work and actually put putting that cartoon into 3D form, they do a fantastic job. Now this thing is completely hollow. It's incredibly lightweight. Uh, so it clearly doesn't have all 15 D batteries in it. <laughs> but the detail here is really nice. You got that line work because it is from the animated stuff. And if you've seen reviews or you're familiar with some of the NECA items from the animated series, you know that they do this outline stuff all the time, which is really nice. I, I'm certainly a fan of it. Now the terrifying heads, two different sculpts repeated. Oh God, it looks like the thing from Spirited Away. Turtle heads are gonna come off. These are gonna go on place of them. These are gonna go on in place of them. The detail here, the sculpting and everything. So it is a nice looking setup, but they do this two-tone, the cell shading style thing, which I actually would prefer they don't have. Same thing with the X-Men animated series stuff, but it's some reason everybody feels obligated to do the cell shading when they're just going to be in natural shadows because they're 3D items, right? I mean, we have all these shadows here, so is that technically where the cell shading should be? Like, it's, it's silly to put it on the back or whatever. Anyway, we've got the hat, which uh, they all seem to be the exact same sculpt. There's not even an alternate design. In fact, they're so much the same sculpt that this little like imperfection right there is on all of the hats. These are kind of a soft rubber so they can bend and stuff, which is nice. It's probably helpful to get them onto the heads, but you can also stack them. So when you put them away, because maybe you don't want these things, look at that. Simple. The hair and the tortoise book is essentially lifted right off the animated thing screen so really nice i mean this, these are accessories that are <laughs> very specific to episodes and stuff like i don't remember this bird at all but it's here it's got a bandana on but this line is essentially endless with options and it's a danger zone for collectors because it's endless the skateboard not too bad i mean there's like a texture on the bottom which is cool they work so all you tech deck pros could probably play with this thing. So the nunchucks for Michelangelo, looking pretty good. Also with that line artwork, and I prefer this. Don't do the cell shading, just do line work like this. This is great. Uh, same thing with the Psy for Raphael. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I think it's just a piece of white paint that happened to hit that random piece, whatever. The swords, pretty simple again. The line work is where I think these things are best, but I hate that there's these little, you know, like mold, injection molding or whatever, where they're, I don't know how that works in the manufacturing process, but it's a bummer that they don't get shaved down in any way. I don't know how you would, but uh, we got the bow staff, which looks nice. Again, just the, the line work that makes it look nice, but good paint work as always with NECA. That is, no doubt in my mind that their stuff is gonna look great when it comes to sculpting and painting. So we've got some alternate head types. So again, you see how the cell shading happens. I That purple seems brighter than it should be. Like that looks like the proper color, doesn't it? And then that's brighter? I don't know, that's weird. But Michelangelo, there is some cell shading happening as well. You just, it's a little harder to tell with him. But these are the couple different faces you get, Leonardo and Raphael. So again, the cell shading, less obvious, 
on Raphael, but pretty obvious on Leonardo. All these hands, I mean, there's a lot, right? So basically you're just trying to give options to every turtle. By default, they all have these gripping hands on and they also have cell shading, but it's like in a really random spot right there inside the hand. Oh, look, you've got horizontal and vertical options for the hands. As everybody let me know in my Super 7 Donatello review that these hands are meant for people with bow staffs and swords, so you can kind of point with them, but that, that feels really tight. I'm sure it'll be fine when we put it on somebody's arm. Now, you may be able to see this on camera too, but look, that one is super glossy. Now what happened? We just, the matte finish that goes on these hands just totally got missed on this one. Just a bummer. We've got the pointing hands again with the cell shading right inside at the wrist, which is so strange to me. But all these flat hands are the same thing. Cell shading, flat, uh, and then a glossy mistake. Set of thumbs up hands that we have uh, two sets of these. So four hands all together and same general layout. So Michelangelo, and the detail on these are all gonna be the same. So we'll just kind of glance through and I do wanna get these uh, jackets off of them because I don't really care to have them and I hate the pants, but it looks good. And if you like this set and you wanted the disguise, then it looks awesome. But I, I think even if I had the coat on, I would remove the pants because they're just strange, but you know, accurate to the cartoon as they should be. But the details are great. So just like we saw on the other head sculpt, you kind of have this two tone, but it's just a little harder to see on Michelangelo and the dark green just looks so good to me. It's more reminiscent of those early episodes where everything was at like nighttime running around the city and stuff. And they just had like a darker overall kind of look. So Donatello again with the two tone, I wish it was just a single color because I don't like the bright purple, although it's brighter on camera than it is in person. And same details, of course. And then you got Raphael who's looking pretty good happier in the cartoon than he is in the movies and Leonardo so they all look great I'm very pleased and the soft goods are really really fantastic so if you like this set you're gonna be really really happy with these they're a little thin which is a good thing but they're double layered so there's like actually stitching on the inside look at that and that's like almost realistic the way you would build a coat so this is They've done an excellent, excellent job on these. Let's get these coats off and see what's going on underneath. And I don't know how you do it. Um, <laughs> uh, so a little heads up. Since I was saying uh, earlier, you can actually pop all these things apart and it shows you that in the back of the box, but the lower half of their heads can be separated so you can kind of build your own uh, turtle in a sense and have like the right expression, but yeah, I was trying to take the coat off and it just pops off. Nice little preview of how that works. All right, so that actually kind of took a while to get all of those things off, but to kind of let you know, the pants have elastic and they wrap around this lower half of the, f the turtles, so it actually works incredibly well. Uh, they're, built like, they're built like sweatpants, but they look like jeans. Joggers, huh. And the coats, look great. I mean, the, the quality is fantastic. It's just after touching them for a while, I have like a chalky feeling all over my fingers and I don't know <laughs> why that is. So that's a little strange, but they look good. The pockets, uh, they're functional. So you can put some hands in there or you can put, you know, maybe you want to put a little pocket pizza for later. <laughs> and as far as the figures look, I'm curious to know if the other versions of this, like the bright green and then the dark green that didn't come with the costumes have the same lower half or if they changed that for this, because it seems a little odd, but they, I mean, they look like the cartoon. So that's, that's good, right? They've done their purpose, but the details without the coats and stuff on, I mean, they all pretty much are the same thing, right? It's just the difference of the, how their belts work, but the shells, the quality, I love it. I am such a fan. I just wish that the two-tone coloring wasn't there because it's just, it's just weird looking. But man, these things look even better in person than they do on the screen. So wait, if you think these look good now, <laughs> boy, just wait until you have one in your hand and then you look at it. But they look great. So let's just jump into articulation. So starting at the top, we got a full rotation, obviously no big deal, but we also have 
a hinge point on the bandana. So it spins around, I'm sure it pops right out, and then it has like a, a hinge point, which is really cool. That's like some extra articulation that you might not expect. And despite these hard lines here, this is just to kind of look like a cartoon, the, there's no articulation in the face. Just they separate, they come apart as we've seen before, and we will jump into that as well. But as far as looking down, that's not too bad. You can kind of tell that there's actually articulation at the base of the neck. Uh, looking up isn't too great, but it's better than nothing. Not only can you tilt the head because the it's on some sort of peg underneath, but you can actually kind of get this like wobble thing going on. So you can get all kinds of movement out of the head, just that the down is okay and the, and the up isn't, isn't too great. But you do have a lot of extra movement in there that you might not expect. Now the arms, of course, you can spin them all the way around with the exception of how close to the body you can get it because of the shell. The joints on NECA, you know, classically pretty tight and that is no exception right here so don't go too hard you know obviously you might even want to heat these things up in some really warm water but i never do and sometimes that causes me to break a leg on an alien figure <laughs> but we got the t-pose we've got full rotation here at the top of the arms right in the biceps area and then we have rotation here at the forearms or the elbow and a nice 90 degrees. So there's only a single joint happening right here. And I think it's just because they're so skinny underneath the elbow pad. So it's just not gonna be more than a 90 degrees, which is a little bit of a bummer, but the, you know, it didn't screw up the sculpt and it's a, always a big part of it. Now the wrist of course will have a full rotation, but also has 90 degrees that doesn't really seem to happen that well, but you can get a little bit. You just kind of have to force it, but that wristband obviously is going to get in the way a little bit, but it goes backwards pretty well. And then of course, depending on which figure you have. So let's look at, I think it was Leonardo. Yeah. So Leonardo by default, he's got the gripping hands, but they are the alternate hinge point. So you get that, right? So you can actually point your swords and stuff, which everybody yelled at me for in my other review for not knowing. So on to the lower half, right? So we don't have anything that can happen in the chest just because it's physically not really possible, right? This is all soft though, which is nice. So it helps with the torso articulation. So you actually have like just above the waist where this is all moving and it feels like maybe over time it's gonna get separated or something if you screw with them too much. But you've got some great sideways movement because of that, which is really cool. It's kind of unusual. Uh, you have a full rotation, so you can actually have his legs on backwards if you wanted to. Look at that, little turtle butt cheeks. That's hilarious. Forward, look at that, he's got great ab crunch because of this. So this is beyond my expectations of what can happen, but as you can kind of see in there, that's a pretty huge opening from the top half to the lower half. Then their legs, let's see, you can get like a full, Front kick, not too bad at all, actually. Nice because of that soft rubber front shell. And then the backwards is kind of as far back as you might expect. The splits, yep, you can go full splits on these guys. And they have that awesome ball joint that's going on and it really helps out with articulation. So you can kind of get almost any movement that you would possibly want out of legs because of that. And they're, they're tight, they're not loose that we've seen with other figures. So the opposite, you know, with NECA, sometimes the joints are way too tight, and then Super 7, they're way too loose. But I'd rather have them a little too tight that I know I can loosen up with some warm water. And then we've got some pins, unfortunately, in the legs, but let's see, we've got double jointed knees, which is good because it's gonna really help you with articulation and posing to have a double jointed. And that's just, you know, the knee pad is a, a bit thicker, so you can kind of get away with it a little bit more than you can the arms. Let's see, is there any rotation? There's no rotation in the legs. So the only thing you get up is in the ball joint up there, so you can't rotate. Just kind of unfortunate, but I don't know if that's going to cause any problems for posing or not. The ankles, we've got this pretty good upward. I mean, that's probably physically natural. And then great downwards, and then of course this kind of 
standard rotation piece that you would get on the angles that allow you to keep them flat footed when you have them in different poses. And then they do have holes in their feet for stands. Uh, this is, says NECA 2016. How long have they been doing this? That's weird. And I'm obviously very new to this. So let's look at how we separate the heads. So just to review back on the box, it shows you that you can mix and match all your characters. So to separate them, uh, maybe they're, they're not all this easy, but I was able to just put my finger in there and pull them apart, which is nice. So you can actually even take the bandanas off. I don't know that you would need to, but that just kind of shows you how much these things are put together which is pretty neat. So the bandana can also come out. And then the lower half, right? So that's what that looks like. Just, you know, pops into place. Nothing too wild, but really cool idea and nice of them to consider that when sculpting and building these things and manufacturing them that gives the owner, the buyer, a lot of alternative layouts. So you can have whatever face you want. You can have them scared, happy, sad, neutral, smiling, and open mouth happy. Uh, laughing? Whatever. <laughs> I'm stupid. Endless options of what you want to do for the head. So of course, an angry brow option there, and then kind of a neutral or happy brow option. So alternate heads, this is just insane. You get so much stuff. This is, uh, yeah, great value. So that's articulation, let's get into posing. So there we go. Wow, what a fantastic set. I mean, for the price, yeah, absolutely worth it. Maybe even worth a little bit more depending on how much you love these figures. Now, when it comes to rating the turtles in disguise, I guess technically is how we're gonna have to do this, even though I don't want the disguise. Have I made that clear yet? <laughs> All right, so starting with details. Details are fantastic. I mean, the pizza details, I mean, look at that. That's insane. It's straight out of the cartoon. The colors are perfect. All the little pieces and details that they've included as extras for the accessories are fantastic. Like the soft goods for the jackets and stuff, excellent. So details are a five out of five, which brings us to articulation. Now, articulation was good. There were a couple things that I have a concern with, which ultimately comes down to like, you can't really look up all the way, you can't look down all the way, which isn't that bad and pretty expected pretty much all the time for everything. But the legs are kind of a bummer. I really wish there was some articulation, like a, a rotation somewhere down the leg because it does kind of limit how you can get their stance and you really got to rely on either a stand to hold them up or getting those ankles just at the right angle so they stay flat. Because of that, I'm gonna give them a four out of five because otherwise articulation is fantastic. There's extra articulation in the neck and then the torso does way more than you would expect. Which brings us to posing. And posing, you know, when you have four figures, it's kind of endless opportunities. And if you get a dynamic stand to get these guys lifted up in the air, the possibilities are essentially endless. And I'm gonna put the posing as a five out of five. So there we go, those are the scores 
and the overall rating for the Turtles in Disguise. Now, if you're a fan of the animated series, obviously there's a lot of nostalgia here, but I think this was a great set and it's, an, it's a perfect alternative if you wanted the dark cartoon version versus the brighter green, because those things, those heads, I, I, I just don't want them. <laughs> like I said, they look like the big baby mask you can get for Halloween or whatever, but the jackets are nice, the hats are cool, and all the accessories you get, fantastic. But even if I just got the turtles at that price, I'd still be really happy. I think these are awesome. So what do you think? Let me know down in the comments how you feel about this set. Is it something you already picked up? Because obviously this is an older set, but it's new to me. Who is your favorite turtle, by the way? Does it differ between the animated series and the movies? The personalities are a little bit different, but this is a great set. And another one that you should check out because it's probably worth owning is this one right here. So click that, watch that video, and we'll see you next time.